Well, good morning, guys. It is uh, Friday the 3rd, uh, 4th of July weekend, so Mike is off, and we're both down here at the shed uh, working on these boxes. You can see Mike has done quite a bit of prep work uh, uh, getting these uh, sanded down and primed. Uh, yesterday, he did a little bit of touch-up work on that box uh, and uh, had a little bit of primer showing, and we're just going to uh, smooth it out just a little bit more and then we're going to take a rattle can of primer and uh, and just uh, hit it up with a little bit of primer and then we're going to get our air compressor set up we are going to be spray painting uh, a latex paint on here so we'll be uh, taking some some off-the-shelf latex paint uh, thinning it down with a little latex thinner and a little water uh, to get it uh, to a sprayable consistency and then we're going to haul this stuff outside uh, where we're going to hit it with a quick coat of paint. We're going to let that dry for a few hours and then this afternoon we'll come back and hit it with a second coat of paint and hopefully that will be adequate and we can go on uh, let it dry for a few days and then start the stenciling process. So our main goal for today is to get these boxes with a uh, coat of uh, white paint on them. So we've moved our box outside uh, and it's going to be sitting out here. Mike has got one more side to put a little primer on and that's this side over here and then we're going to let it sit out here in the sun and quickly dry hopefully and then we'll get to painting. Do another yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna do like two small posts. You can see that's already drawing. Yeah. Okay, about after an hour and a half, we've uh, got three coats of uh, uh, paint at least on all the sides. The back didn't get painted quite so much, but we don't really care about that. Um, but the other three sides have all got painted, and Mike has uh, the back box up uh, on the sawhorses, and he's going to sand prime epoxy bondo whatever the holes up and we're going to come back this afternoon about three o'clock and hit this one with paint so we'll see you in a couple hours well hello there it is uh, three o'clock in the afternoon i'm back down at the shed mike just had to leave uh he's having a pickup truck uh, towed uh, and he had to go home to be there when the tow truck got there so that they could get hauled off to uh, um, a repair shop to I don't know, do engine repair or something. But anyway, you can see in the background here, 
that uh, Mike has been working on the back box, uh, the back box, and also the base. Uh, he actually put a stencil on already. I probably would have waited another day just to give the paint time to cure, but it's so hot that it's probably okay. Uh, anyway, uh, he bondoed up this, so I'm going to be uh, taking the uh, sander and sanding down that bondo job and getting ready to spray paint uh, the uh, the white spray paint on this one. We'll probably just work here in the shed because it's just gotten so hot outside. Uh, but uh, but anyway, I'll, I'll bring you back and show you how that's going as I get, get along. I'm not going to film the work. I'll just uh, bring you along step by step to show you as we progress. Hello there. It's Monday and Mike and I are going to be back down here at the shed continuing on the painting of the uh, uh, Harlem Globetrotters table. Now as you can see we've made some progress since the last time we were here. Uh, on the back box we have the blue painted uh, on both sides. Now we decided, or I should say Mike decided to use a rattle can uh, to paint this as opposed to using the spray painter mostly because he had to do it himself and I wasn't going to be here and he didn't want to mess with the air compressor and everything uh, with just one person here so uh, he decided that a rattle can would be fine uh, for for painting this so he went out and picked up a blue and a red in a rattle can and that's what we're going to be painting this with so this one is painted and while you can't see it this one already has the stencil applied to both sides and so I think uh, the plan for today is probably going to be to start by spray painting this and then we'll move to putting new stencils the top stencil on the back box while the the main body is drying and we'll spray paint that and then hopefully this one will get dry enough that we can come back and put the stencil on it and spray paint it also uh, in the three or so hours we have to work here today. Uh, so with that being said, I think I'm going to get the rattle can out and start spray painting. 
And so there we go with the first coat of red on there. We're going to wait about 15 minutes to let it tack up, and then we're going to give it a second coat. We're going to wait about another uh, 10 or 15 minutes, and then we're going to peel it off. So we'll uh, bring you back uh, when we peel the stencil off. Okay, we uh, have the blue stencil peeled off, and boy, does that look good. Now there's some touch-up work. Uh, uh, that we're going to need to do. This was the bad side, the first stencil we put on that we didn't have the technique down right. And there's some places, uh, like if you look right there, you can see what looks like a run. It's actually a place where we had to cut the vinyl to get it to lay down flat. And so when we spray painted, it went between the cut there and, and left the mark. But it still looks really, really good. And once the red is added to it, it's really going to pop. I'll take you around to the other side where the light's shining. And this side, uh, we had uh, the stencil laid down perfectly, and uh, it's just immaculate. It's, it's gorgeous. Once we get everything uh, uh, cleaned up, this is going to look fabulous. So anyway, we still have the red back there, and we're about to peel off the stickers off of that one, and that's going to end our work for today. Uh, I'll tell you, I'll bring you back one more time and show you what that looks like when we're done. Oh, God, that's spectacular. Feel free to commentate. Okay, well... I think this speaks for itself. Mm -hmm. it did pull up some of that blue. Oh yeah. Be a little more careful. Maybe we don't need to burnish it quite so hard. Mike. Good morning. Uh, it is uh, Saturday morning and Mike and I are going to be down at the shed today finishing up the stencil on the box and painting the red paint on that. Uh, Mike hasn't gotten here yet but he should be here any minute uh, so I thought I would do this little introduction and let you get going. One of the things I want to do is film the technique of putting the stencil down on this box and this is a technique that we just learned and we've done several boxes without understanding the technique and so uh, I think it's really important that I show it to you. These stencils are from uh, Pinball Pimp and uh, he has a video up on YouTube that explains this process and that's where I saw it so if you want to see it from the horse's mouth I'll, I'll leave a link down below uh, to his video so you can see how he does it and Mike is walking in the door right now as I talk uh, so anyway um, let me uh, take you over uh, to the box and show you what uh, what we're going to do uh, and then I'll set the camera up and film as we do it so you can get a good detailed understanding of how it works Okay, so one of the things that's really nice about Pinball Pimp's uh, stencils is that he puts these little alignment tabs on there. So that little X is left over from the first stencil, and it will line up with the hole right there on the top stencil. So if you line those two things up, 
uh, the stencils will be perfectly aligned. And, and this is really wonderful because we've worked with stencils in the past that don't have that alignment hole. And trying to see through the stencil and get it lined up is really, really difficult. So th this is just a wonderful thing. There's uh, another hole in the alternate corner there. And so lining those two stencils up gets you lined up really perfectly. Now on this stencil, you can see that white part of the stencil. That's all sticky vinyl that is just uh, there as masking and it's going to get pulled back off again. Uh, and uh, when we did the back box a little while ago, we had a problem. I don't know if I can see it. Yeah, right there where the stencil pulled up some of the paint. And we're worried that with such a large amount of vinyl sticking down that we're going to peel up some of that blue that we put there. So we're going to try and figure out a way to, to not have that sticky show up all over the place. Anyway, we haven't quite figured out how we're going to do that yet, uh, but we'll do something. Hold on. Okay, it's hard to get the camera up high enough to see all of this. But the basic process of this is pretty simple. Um, you just line the, the two guide holes up. And then you put a couple of heavy weights on here to hold it in place. And what were we using? Tools, right? This is heavy enough. So on that little bit of weight, we'll keep this stencil from shifting around uh, while we work on it. Now what we've decided to do is on this stencil, there's a little underlying, uh, underlying carrier sheet, and then this is sticky. So what you do normally is you peel this back, you cut off some of this, and you lay, lay this down and stick it to make a hinge, and then you peel the rest of the, the stuff away and cut it as you go down to the other end, laying it down flat. Uh, Mike, you want to grab the, the little thing that's over there on this other table? Right in the right-hand corner. No, nope, no, nope, come over here. The brown, the brown squeegee oh, the, thing. The burnish tool. Burnishing tool. Yeah. Do you have the scissors? Uh, they're in that bag, that white bag there. So anyway, and as you lay it down, you take the burnishing tool and you lay it back. Now, since the part that we need to paint stops right here, what we're going to do this time is we're going to peel this back, we're going to peel the under, under uh, sheet off, cut it right there and peel this back, and then we're just going to go to the other end and do the same thing, and we're going to leave the backing paper on in the middle so that it isn't sticky and we don't have to peel that off when we get done painting. So, with that being said, let's make it happen. Mine still looks good. I was talking about. Uh, let me uh, move you in just a little bit closer for this. Uh, so what this technique does, the vinyl that's under here is really, really thin and stretches really, really easily. And the backing paper sticks really tight to the vinyl. So as you're peeling the backing paper off, it is stretching the the vinyl as you go, and if you try and take this whole sheet and peel it off, it starts stretching the vinyl and then you get little bumps and rips and ripples and places where paint can run under and it's really, really nasty. 
And so what um, Pinball Pimp recommends is that you start, peel off a little bit, and then when you get, you know, two or three inches in, you just do a diagonal tear and just tear off a little bit. That way you're not providing so much pressure or pull against the vinyl, uh, and the diagonal tear also seems to help cross these straight lines. So I'm going to start in this upper corner, and you can see that I'm going to probably need a knife to get this started because it's, ah, I got it, I think. If you might want to pull from this side so you can see it in the camera. Well, the camera sees this. Well, when you start Wait, pulling. You, you mean tell it like this? Yeah. Okay, I can do that. <laughs> so as we're pulling, you can see that the vinyl has a tendency to stretch and lift. Even with just this little bit, it's already causing a little bit of a bubble. So from right here, if I start, I can tear this right here. And now instead of pulling it up, I can use the paper to hold that down. And I'm still getting little bits of ripple, but it's nowhere near as bad if I was trying to peel the whole thing off. And I'm going around this little cutout hole here. So get that loosened up. And the other thing this lets you do is tear at almost a complete 180 degree angle, which also helps keep the vinyl down to the table. Now, since we're right at the end here, we'll be able to flatten that out without a problem. Now, right here, the vinyl is starting to lift up, so I need to peel that back and get that to set back down. I um, used a burnishing tool to help me hold that. It actually works pretty good. And you can see that peeled off just fine. Now, if there was more stencil here to uncover, I would continue to peel away at that. But since this isn't going to need to be removed, I've actually got everything exposed that I need to expose. And all I need to do is flatten this little piece out right here. This little bit right here. Burnish that down fairly tight so that the paint can't get under it. And I'm done. And so now I'll move down to the other end to do the same thing. I'll move the camera down there so you can watch that. This side has a little more to do, so I will be doing a couple of tears on this side. The other uh, thing that everybody says, 
And so I'll say it too, is take your time. It's harder to put this stuff back if you rip it off than it is to take your time and leave it on the table. So And by tearing off these little strips, there's just so much less resistance to the, to the pulling. Basketball's the end of it, isn't it? Yeah. That is it. And so that uncovers everything that we need to uncover, so I don't need to peel off anymore. So we'll hit this with a little uh, spray paint after we burnish this down and get it to sit, sit tight. Or are we going to turn it over and try and do the other side? I, I don't think I want to do that. I don't either. <laughs> I'm glad that you said that. Okay. What are you trying to I'm do? I'm just going to mask off this back area. So you want to go all the way down here? Yeah, or just, just that's fine. Right there. Okay, we're going to continue masking this up and then we will spray paint it. So one of the things we almost forgot to do is put a little dab of tape over, uh, over this little hole because there is white paint underneath this that needs to stay white and the spray paint will uh, leak through around that and make a little tiny red square on your thing that you have to then hand cover back up. Okay, we're going to need to give that about 15 minutes or so to tack up and then we can spray another coat on top of it. 
Uh, and then we'll give that about another 20 minutes, and then we will uh, peel the stencil back off. Okay, uh, it's uh, been about 20 minutes. Uh, the paint uh, has dried to the point where it won't come off on your fingers. It's uh, a long way from being cured. But we're going to go ahead and uh, peel this stencil off. Actually, you want to take that side and I'm sure. Now we're going to need to turn this thing over uh, so that uh, we can paint the other side, but we don't want to set this red down on the sawhorses because it's not cured enough yet. So we have some 2 by 4 blocks we're that, gonna use this. that we're going to tape in each corner. As one. We'll lay it down all the way across. So that across the bottom. Okay, well this is the easiest part to tape the 2 by 4 so let's make that this side. So anyway, we're going to tape that up, get this flipped over, and I'll bring you back and show you when we're done. Okay, we got the table flipped over. Uh, we're going to put the decal on here. Uh, we just put those two blocks on there and then flipped it over. Uh, well, I'm not going to film us putting a decal on because it's the same as the last one. Okay, we got the stencil on. Mike's going to start putting the first coat of paint on. We do still have one more small stencil for the front to do once we get done with this. Uh, so I think we'll, uh, we will bring you back when the painting is all done uh, and show you the whole table. Cabinet. And there you go. Our painting is done. Uh, well, it's not done. We still have touch-up work to do on the white, a little oversprays and stuff like that. But for the most part, it is completely finished. Uh, it looks awesome. The red stripes wrap around, line up okay. Looks good all the way around. It's a little dark back here in the back, but, uh, but you can kind of see that it all looks good. An awesome improvement. So that's going to end this video. Uh, it's going to end our work today, and uh, we'll be back on Monday uh, to uh, put this thing together. We do still need to uh, clean up the legs. They're sitting back here. They're chrome legs, but they're all pockmarked with rust and stuff, so we, we're going to need to to wire wheel them down and give them a, a spray paint or some silver paint or something like that. So we need that to get done before we can put the legs back on. And then we'll uh, reinstall all of the electronics, and uh, this project will be done. So thanks a lot for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.